Yeah. I think we can start. Information papers issued since the last meeting. We've got three. Uh, members, please refer to uh, item one on the agenda. Item two, items for discussion at the next meeting um, to be held on the 15th of May 2015. Please refer to the list of outstanding items for discussion and a list of follow-up actions. The administration has proposed three items for discussion next time. Government's response to the report on study of road traffic congestion in Hong Kong submitted by the TAC, replacement of tunnel lighting system in the Kai Tech Tunnel, and public transport strategy study seating capacity of public light buses. In other words, whether there should be additional seats on public light buses. And then the MTRCL will put forward proposals on fair adjustments for 2015 at, at the end of May. If we can't discuss um, the matter, um, at the meeting in May, we can we'll we'll only be able to discuss the um, paper in June, and then the uh, fair adjustment will take effect. So let's have a discussion um, in May. Uh, MTRCL won't be able to tell us in May what the adjustments uh, will be and what the concessions will be, but at least um, we want them to come to listen to our views. And as uh, we will have to deal with four items um, on that day, we will uh, have to um, lengthen the meeting. Yes, Chairman. I agree with you. Uh, as uh, our meeting time um, is very precious, I think, Chairman, um, you should ask the MTLCL to uh, provide us with a paper on the um, $10 million paid to the uh, former CEO um, upon his departure. And then, Chairman, can I propose um, an item for discussion in May or in June. Um, we've recently seen a very serious traffic accident. A Baptist University student died in the um, accident, um, probably uh, or maybe because of um, um, a defective braking system uh, on a um, heavy vehicle. And I think um, the um, Vehicle Examination Center of the Transport Department should give us a paper on the matter. All right. I will um, forward your request to the um, department, and then um, we will um, follow up after we've read the paper. And then on the first issue, do members agree that we should hold a special meeting? To discuss the um, um, um uh, uh, sum given to the former CEO and other high um, other senior um, officers. 
in the MTR CL, and, and you know, um, I don't think uh, we can um, complete a discussion of um, the MTR fare adjustment within an hour. So um, let's um, have a special meeting to discuss um, issues relating to the MTR. Um, Thank you very much for your very um, wise decision, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gary Fan. Yes, Chairman, thank you. I agree that we should uh, have a meeting with the MTRCL before MTRCL proposes um, its um, fair adjustment for 2015. And then uh, I also agree that we should discuss the um, um, Payment uh, to the former CEO. Uh, I want to say that, in fact, um, um, there has been a public outcry um, concerning a proposed a fair adjustment. Um, some are of the view that um, there should be uh, a review of the fair adjustment mechanism. Um, um, as early as possible. Mr. Anthony Chair has um, said that um, um, the government would seek the MTRCL's consent as to um, whether that uh, fair adjustment mechanism can be reviewed as soon as possible. And um, so um, uh, we hope that um, there can be a review before uh, 2018. So I want to know whether um, there has been a meeting between the administration and the MTRCL uh, on advancing the review for the fair adjustment mechanism, which um, allows for both upward and downward adjustments. Yes, other views? Mr. Long Kuo Hong? Chairman, in fact, um, you really um, shouldn't uh, be the chairman um, for um, the meeting with the uh, MTRCL because you are uh, the one among us who is uh, most familiar with uh, railway matters. So uh, when we meet the MTRCL, I think you should let Tenka Pio chair the meeting because you really know railway um, matters very well. So uh, I think let Mr. Tenka Pio chair the meeting and uh, and you can ask questions of the MTRCL. Mr. Tenka Pio, I'm not uh, responding to what um, Mr. Leung has suggested. I just want to say that concerning um, item one on the list of outstanding items, it's a very um, important item because um, we may uh, need to um, increase uh, penalties um, to enhance traffic management, or we may have to um, um, have new measures to limit the number of private cars. And so I want to know whether the government is um, studying the report or whether the report is now being studied by a consultant hired by the government. Because um, um, this is uh, a very important item in my view, and uh, we, we're going to see um, Philippa string very soon. It will be very difficult to find a time slot and a room to hold a meeting of the panel. So, uh, Chairman, I want to know um, what stage um, 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 this um, um, uh, I, uh, this matter is um, in. Now, uh, we can only have uh, 50 minutes um, for the uh, item. So um, let's um, deal with the matter and see uh, how f uh, what progress we can make and how far we can go. All right, so um, item three on the agenda, public transport strategy study provision of student service vehicles. I believe members have already received the papers. Let's invite the administration in. Oh, we have with us Mr. Yao Sheng Mu and his team. And uh, as um, this matter is uh, related to the work of the 
Education Bureau. At the public hearing last time, we agreed that we would invite a representative from the Education Bureau um, to attend, and we have Miss Sylvia Wong uh, from the Education Bureau of us. Welcome. So, Mr. Yao, please. Um, yes, Chairman. We understand that um, there have been some problems with um, the demand and supply of um, student service vehicles, and um, um, some schools have problems tendering out their um, school bus service. And we understand that uh, in the coming years there will still be a huge demand for student service vehicles. And so we would like to increase the flexibility of such services, we, and we hope that market demand can be uh, well taken care of. The Transport Department has um, come up with a proposal to um, exempt private school buses um, from the so-called uh, sourcing requirement. And so concerning private school buses, in other words, uh, school buses uh, operated directly by the schools, um, the proposed exemption from the sourcing requirement will be implemented as soon as possible. And then concerning um, relaxation of certain requirements for um, uh, non-franchise buses, um, the um, industry has come up with some counter proposals on the 27th of march um there was a meeting um um comprising representatives from our bureau the education bureau the transport department electrical members and uh, representatives of transport trade organizations and the education sector and um this uh, uh, so a working group uh, has been set up to um look at how to um Make better arrangements uh, for the new school year in September 2015, and we um, welcome this development. In fact, on the 13th of April, the first um, working group meeting was held. We will closely monitor the uh, demand and supply situation, and we will uh, also look at whether the working group came up with good suggestions to resolve the supply and demand situation. Uh, on Tuesday, there was a um, public hearing on um, a student uh, a student service vehicles, and uh, we will allow the education sector and the transport sector to, um, through market forces, deal with this matter effectively. If there is an imbalance in the market, the government will intervene at the appropriate moment, and our intervention uh, is not fixed. If we realize that licensing should be uh, relaxed, we have an open attitude. We are willing to listen to the working group and the industry. Previously, the government had a a O3 proposal. This was to elicit more responses, and we see that uh, the in the provision of student services, supply and demand need to coordinate the efforts. If the market forces cannot improve the situation, the transport department proposal of A O three R is something that could be considered. But if the working group has other suggestions, we are willing to look at these proposals. Of course, the government should minimize its impact on market order. But at the same time, the government needs to resolve insufficient student bus service. In today's transport panel, the views we hear will be forwarded to the working group, such that uh, the transport industry and the affected parties can have a further discussion. OK, we now have question and answer session. So let's start with four minutes. First, Mr. Wong Kokeng. Thank you, Chairman. I am happy to hear the message provided by the Under Secretary, and I am aware that the government, 
the government attitude is to provide more room for the working group to discuss. I'm aware that this working group includes the education sector, the transport industry, and also includes other stakeholders. Therefore, I'd like to ask this working group uh, work schedule. I think the affected parties, that is the parents or students, they would like to know, be aware of this schedule. They would like to know when a consensus can be reached to solve the problem. Such that uh, when the new scholastic year starts, they will have transport. Parents uh, do not need to pay exorbitant fees. Uh, the school can solve the problem. So we want a win-win situation for all. And I hope that uh, the problem can be solved and uh, the market will not be affected unduly. The transport industry can also uh, minimize its concerns and worries. Their operations should not be adversely impacted. So my question is targeted at the Under Secretary. What is your timetable, your schedule? Chairman. First of all, I have to thank Mr. Wong for his views and his positive attitude. Uh, he was correct. We need to solve the problem. By September this year, uh, parents, teachers, and students need a satisfactory transport solution. S while setting up the working group and in our meeting at the end of March, there was a positive note that the industry have conveyed their difficulties to parents and schools. Uh, for example, cost of operations, the the logistics routes, uh, staffing levels. So, parents and teachers are now aware of what is required. So this can help both sides find methods uh, using the market forces to seek a solution. They are aware that this cannot be postponed. Uh, as uh, Mr. Wong said, the new scholastic year starts in September. They've already convened the first meeting. Even though uh, it's led by the transport industry and schools, but the transport, bureau, uh, transport department staff have participated to facilitate converse, uh, dialogue. Regarding the timetable, they are aware that a solution needs to be found before September, and schools need sufficient time, for example, to conduct tenders. The transport industry also needs time uh, for preparation. So they are aware of this target and uh, goal in mind. So. I'd like to defer to the Transport Department to supplement. Chairman, thank you for the question. And actually, both sides have met on Monday, and they had conveyed their views. The transport industry is aware that some schools' uh, provision of student bus services uh, need extra assistance, and we are aware that the industry is also uh, reaching out to these schools, how they can provide assistance, how they can better match their services. So we will continue to monitor their progress, and as far as we know, they are preparing for a second meeting. Uh, we will be monitoring their progress. Chairman, the two bureaus, the Education Bureau and Transport Bureau, need to participate and they need to report their progress to our panel. Next, Yik Ming. In the public hearing, I said I would follow up on the Undersecretary's A03R proposal. So 
uh, if I cannot conclude my questions, I'll follow up in the second round. First of all, uh, we let's say we a company has a fleet of four vehicles and one or two, uh, only one or two vehicles have this AO3R permission. So the whole fleet can still survive, they can continue. That's one scenario. The second scenario is a painful scenario. I've asked two uh, companies, they have only one vehicle, a 28 seat vehicle, and they rely on this vehicle. It's uh, uh, an 03 model, it's a very old model. Uh, since the, uh, the mortgage is paid off, uh, the husband can drive the vehicle and the uh, wife can work as a nanny and uh, for, for them this license is a uh, retirement fund so another example uh, we have uh, a guy who is working uh, under very tough circumstances he has to pay off uh, the financing and the Saturdays and Sunday he has to drive uh, he has to uh, work as a green minibus driver uh, and uh, he can only sell the license uh, much later and the third uh, example is Marymount, uh, Rosemary, uh, R Rosary Hill uh, it's on a steep hill uh, all the students take a bus and they can survive so the under sector you need to uh, clarify the issue why do only AO3R license holders survive? Uh, you cannot apply the solution to problematic schools. We have schools uh, that are in uh, uh, in accessible location. They have low enrollment. So this is something that needs to be handled. We have tabled today a paper from uh, the transport industry. They are willing to provide assistance but they don't know how many more schools face difficulty. Uh, we've, uh, uh, we have information that uh, out of the 800 odd schools in Hong Kong, there are only uh, a dozen or so that are in difficulty. So we'd like to notify all the schools through you where uh, they have difficulty in the tender, they should uh, contact you. Mr. Wong Kok Heng, the goal is by end of May to highlight all these cases. So in the coming two, three weeks, those schools in difficulty need to contact us. The public omnibus operators uh, are here to help. Well, I object to the industry doing that. They're, they are tr trying to subsidize, uh, uh, try to resolve this uh, problem by through subsidies. So we need time for all parties to sit down and resolve this uh, structural problem. We have under-enrollment, we have uh, inaccessible schools. That, uh, so these schools should not be subsidized by the industry. They can't foot the bill forever. This problem has to be resolved. So I'm very happy today that the Education Bureau has a representative and I hope that there, there can be a conclusion by end of May so we can resolve a uh, student's needs. But in the future, we need to sit down and resolve this AO3R licensing arrangement. I think uh, the uh, Transport Department is uh, shirking its responsibility. If there's nobody submitting a tender, you're just saying that uh, there's no tender. Uh, but if somebody submits a tender, that uh, then you consider yourself your job done, but if there's no commercial model. Uh, 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 but if a person spends a million plus on a vehicle and uh, they run it for one year and they realize that they, it cannot, uh, it's not sustainable. Well, th then they are forced to to t uh, take up a, a legal um, arrangement. Well, so you're saying that uh, we should uh, look at the, the structural issue, there should be some subsidies. Uh, yes, Chairman. An important point is uh, schools need to coordinate their efforts. They need to accept that uh, different uh, students, uh, students from other schools on the bus. If you don't have 
uh, sufficient enrollment, then you need to have carpooling. Well, then the, the industry and the schools need to talk. Next, Mr. Poon. Just now, the Under Secretary said there was a working group and the government's role is to facilitate communication. Well, I hope that they can solve the student bus service problem. If they cannot resolve it, then the government has an important role. But I'm uh, happy to hear that uh, there's an Education Bureau representative here. Uh, on last Tuesday, when we had the public hearing, it involved the Education Bureau. If you refer to uh, Annex 4 of our paper, uh, kindergartens and primary schools between 2014 and 2015, there's an increase, a surge in enrollment. There's a 6,000 plus and 8,000 plus in primary schools. So has the government assessed the impact of increased enrollment on the need to, and its impact on uh, student bus services? So bus drivers have told us that uh, costs have risen and they cannot subsidize uh, the school bus service for four years. So one suggestion is that sh could the government subsidize the industry? I'm not sure which uh, bureau should spearhead the uh, efforts. Well, if there's a problem, you cannot just rely on the AO3R and market forces because some schools are in a distant location students cannot rely uh, on the family to uh, take them to school. They need a school bus service. So the government should be forward-looking, uh, should seek solutions to this problem. Otherwise, in September, uh, when school starts, you'll have a big headache uh, students and the uh, transport industry uh, would uh, raise their views as well. And the majority of the industry are concerned about cost, cost of operations. So will the Education Bureau uh, look into the possibility of subsidies? I hope that Ms. Wong from the Education Bureau can respond. In fact, we have um, discussed this matter many times and we understand that um, um, there is one stakeholder uh, which um, um, really um, plays a critical role. Yes, Chairman, we have the um, traveling expenses subsidy scheme for eligible students. Students can um, choose um, the mode of transport they prefer to go to school and to go home from school. And um, school buses um, are one of the choices for students and parents. So we have this um, subsidy scheme and um, so students and parents can um, make their own choices. But um, I understand that um, the scheme is uh, means tested. Yes, um, that's true. But then members uh, are concerned about some um, structural um, difficulties associated with the schools. And as a result, um, uh, your criteria cannot be met. I think um, 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 factors that need to be taken into account include whether um, public tra there are tra public transport um, modes available near the home and whether there are um, any vans and other um, services um, that can meet the uh, needs of the students. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Yes, Chairman, thank you. Last time, um, school representatives pointed out that um, the schools and the students uh, were, were too scattered. You know, um, I think for um, primary school students and kindergarten students, it would be best if they can go to school um, or go to schools that are near their homes. But then, of course, parents do have other considerations in choosing schools and kindergartens for their kids.
uh, does the uh, bureau um, believe that um, issuing more licenses will help um, resolve the problems brought about by um, the scattering of um, students? Do you think that um, school buses will become uh, viable in the future? And do you know um, uh, what level of patronage for school buses um, is needed to enable the operator to at least uh, balance the box? Um, apart from uh, issuing uh, more licenses, do you have um, other effective measures in mind? Um, even if you issue more licenses, does it mean that uh, the operators will be able um, to make a profit out of their business? So um, we are worried that despite your new measure, uh, there still won't be an adequate supply of school bus service in September. At the public hearing, the Under Secretary um, said that there were 59 um, full-time school buses and the business was viable and so increasing the number of licenses will help. Under Secretary, can you please supplement? Yes, Chairman. Um yes um um some parents may have to um pay a high level of fees for school bus service um i think um the fees are dependent on um supply and demand in the market Yes, we understand that some schools have said that there aren't enough school buses, and some electrical members have um, also um, expressed very grave concerns. Um, uh, um, the uh, trade, the operators have uh, told us a lot about um, the operating costs, and I think the operating cost is affected by the size of the vehicle. In fact, there are um, uh, NFBs with um, A3 endorsement only. Oh, no, sorry, uh, Chairman. So does it mean that the government thinks uh, it is not a structural problem, but rather a supply and demand problem? I just want you to give me a short answer. Uh, I don't uh, know what um, Mr. Wu is referring to when he talks about a structural problem. Uh, and uh, one of the factors at play is um, uh, how much uh, more parents are willing to pay uh, in respect of school bus fees. And I th think um, one way out is to um, increase um, the um, issuing of endorsement AO3R. Um, and in fact, this is um, not the only uh, measure we have in mind. Um, some schools um, feel that they um, should be allowed to um, uh, directly operate um, the surface and they will be accepted from the sourcing requirement. And I think this idea is welcomed uh, by schools as well as by the um, operators. Now, uh, I think um, the problem um, is not that the bids received are too high. Um, no, in, uh, the problem is that the schools do not receive any bids or tenders. This is because the operators do, uh, or the, do, do, simply do not know how to um, do their calculations because there are a lot of uncertainties. Uh, in fact, these points were um, uh, made to you last time. Um, Um, some have said that the um, um, 
tender documents and this tender requirements are, are not clear enough. So this is a structural problem, not um, a, a supply and demand problem. Schools simply don't know how to do their calculations in preparing bids. Mr. Gary Fan, uh, there are a lot of cross-border students and also there are students who have to travel um, a long distance to go to school. And uh, look, please look at um, Annex 4. We can see that um, for kindergartens, um, um, there was an increase in the number uh, by 19,000 from, um, from um, 2011 to 2014, and for primary school students, an additional 6,400. Under Secretary, you said at the public hearing on Tuesday that um, we uh, had to um, uh, rely on the market to resolve the problem. I do not agree. Now, according to a 2014 Transport Department study, um, there were about 1,000 um, uh, NFBs with um, AO3 endorsement, which were not um, serving students. And so concerning um, vehicles of AO3 endorsement, can you require them to provide student service instead of other types of service uh, which are more profitable, for example, uh, tour service? And in Singapore, in fact, all um, uh, vehicles which can uh, satisfy the safety requirements can um, provide um, student service. Or will you uh, follow the Singaporean example? Chairman, not all buses of student service endorsement are um, providing student service. About 60%, 70% rather are, 30% are not. So how can we make the remaining 30% provide student service? I think uh, market forces is uh, one important factor. If parents are willing to um, pay more fees, then that will be an incentive. But then, um, can uh, can we uh, or should we force um, vehicles of this endorsement to provide student service? Should we make it compulsory for them to provide student service? Is it the way um, uh, the government um, and um, our policies work? And that's why we are proposing um, a O three R endorsement. We understand that schools and uh, many in the community um, want um, um, to see this happen. But, Chairman, I think those uh, vehicles of AEO3 endorsement um, must provide student service. In other words, uh, we, uh, uh, an adjustment to the policy is required. We can't solely on um, market forces. So you're proposing an, a new endorsement. Is that your proposal? There are some service providers issued with a number of endorsements, and they can um, choose to provide um, the different types of service. But I think in the endorsement, can you um, set the priority? Uh, uh, now, because if we, we don't make it compulsory for the operators to provide certain services, then um, they may not provide the service. But that, that will be quite difficult. So you mean um, it's okay for um, AO3 vehicles to um, serve tourists, individual travelers, and, and not students? In my view, that's not acceptable. That's why I, I think you have to do something about um, the, um, the the licenses. I think um, a free market can't uh, 
resolve all the problems. Yes, yes, we we have to um, do something. But I think the government has a role to play. If the um, free market can operate well, then the government ha will have to intervene. Now, in fact, the government has indirectly answered your question. Now, for the 1,000 vehicles, they are not providing student service, and government can't force them to provide student service, and so. Um, government is saying that um, um, uh, it hopes that market forces will um, make the 1,000 vehicles provide student service again. Ms. Claudia Moore, I hope that the government will not um, answer members' questions so indirectly. Um, I hope that um, the chairman will not have to interpret the government's answers um, for it. Now, do you know that um, there are students living in North Point going to school uh, in Kun Chong, there are, uh, or Kowloon Chong rather, there are children um, living in Jordan going to school in Stanley. Yes, you may think this is um, the parents' choice. Uh, to a certain extent, that's true. But then many schools, especially the prestigious schools, have this problem. When um, children uh, leave school, then um, there are uh, long queues of luxurious cars um, on the roads. And some schools um, require students to take school buses. They do not allow uh, parents to uh, take their children to school and take their children uh, back home. And uh, But then there are many problems. There aren't enough school buses, and also parents don't um, um, think they, their rights to um, uh, what, what should be deprived. And you're saying that uh, uh, September um, is a deadline because uh, the school, new school year will start. And then meanwhile, we have this um, submission um, uh, requesting that the new measures be shelved. And the uh, industry has said that it wants a year to um, work things out. Um, at the public hearing, some operators said that the mechanism would collapse. So, the government's role is you're trying to ride roughshod over the industry. So, there shouldn't be too many schools that can't find a school bus service. So, I want to ask, as a matter of fact, how many schools have run into this difficulty, and what is the route? Of course, we have cross-border students. So aside from these, and we have the Kowloon, Hong Kong, and, new dis and the new territories, the districts. So could you tell us uh, which area, which district is running into difficulties? Could you answer directly? Regarding Ms. Moe's first question, will the government uh, ignore uh, outside views. Well, in the previous public hearing, as I said in the beginning, we feel that if there's an imbalance between in the market demand and supply, then they should seek a market solution. Now, if demand and supply have worked uh, towards a solution, as in uh, the working group, that is the schools. Some schools in procuring a bus service have encountered difficulties. Then they should notify the transport industry through this working group. The industry has promised to match supply and demand. So if they can satisfy school demands, so the government will assess whether it's necessary to increase licensing. I said the, the government has some plans, but uh, these plans are not fixed and rigid. Uh, regarding the second question, uh, could you elaborate which districts have the biggest problem? Uh, I'm not sure if the Education Bureau have this department. We don't need details. Uh, do you have some district information? We have 
met with the uh, primary school council. They have uh, representatives from the 18 districts. So there are difficulties. Uh, they have low tenders. Sometimes there are no tenders at all and across the 18 districts. Mr. Tangapi, Chairman, of course there are going to be difficulties with the tenders, so we would like to understand the government's position. He knows that uh, the fares are high. Could you tell us uh, how high are the fares? Second, the government paper has responded to the industry questions. For example, in the annexes, there are two bodies that have have submitted their cost structure for two types of vehicles. For example, the nanny service, uh, uh, they have a basic expenditure of 33000 per month. These are uh, le operating legally. They can only uh, serve as student bus services. They, they cannot uh, operate in other areas. So do you feel, uh, is this figure accurate, inaccurate? Are they straying from reality? Well, if 33,300 is accurate, then if they fill up the 15 seats and each student per month will need to pay uh, $2,000. So let's say they can make two runs, uh, they, they can uh, serve 30 students uh, each month, the, the student uh, will have to pay $1,000. Is that the case? How do you assess this cost analysis? If you feel it's inaccurate, uh, will you run your own analysis? Uh, does it really cost that much? Then maybe you need to subsidize them. Who has this information? Well, Chairman, let me answer Mr. Tangapiu some of uh, Tangapiu's questions regarding the high fees. Uh, we don't have a view on fees. Uh, we feel that this is a negotiation between parents and the service provider. I mentioned just now, in our past experience, the schools and parents have told us uh, that it's difficult to find a provider and the uh, fees are on the high side. So that is the parent view, it's school view. I'm just repeating this view. The government doesn't have a view on wh whether fees are high or low. Well, um, transport department staff can uh, respond to the cost structure question. Well, just now there were some discussions uh, uh, regarding private minibus operations. We now have 1,900 uh, school minibuses operating. They have uh, room for survival. Now, we understand that when they can coordinate uh, efficiently, they can serve kindergartens and primary schools. They have quite a good logistics operation. They don't just rely on one run. So in this respect, we understand that they uh, can survive in their existing operations. So you're saying that the cost structure is accurate. Uh, it's mostly accurate, but profitability is quite well. Well, that sounds totally opposite from what we heard in the hearing. Uh, you, you're agreeing that the uh, cost structure is 33300 and uh, there's profitability. Well, in the operation costs and profitability, nobody can be more clear than the operator themselves. So we can see that the number of private school buses there has been an increase in the last few years. It indicates that the operations, uh, there is room uh, in the market to survive. So that is our observation. Mr. Tiawai Chun, 
Well, I heard the Education Bureau, and my understanding is that their policy is to allow parents and students to choose how to go to school. If families have financial difficulties, uh, then there should be some subsidies to the family or the student. I feel some schools uh, say that uh, they can't secure a service, so they there are two uh, scenarios. There are there, there are no operators willing to submit a tender, and another scenario, uh, the. Public Omnibus Operators Association say that uh, uh, they wouldn't mind subsidizing uh, the, the students, but uh, if this is a free market, then could we uh, could both sides make some compromises such that uh, there can be more choice? Just now, the Under Secretary also said that. If uh, parents can pay a bit more, uh, or, but they won't comment what, how much is much, uh, then I feel the Education Department and Transport Department need to play a role. If uh, both parties can compromise, if you don't, uh, if you can allow students from different schools uh, to carpool, then it becomes feasible. We need uh, some mediation. Well, some people also say that uh, you can, uh, the government can subsidize. Well, I find a difficulty with subsidies. Uh, so if, uh, uh, if a, well, that's different from subsidizing a, f a, f a family with financial difficulties because I think if there are subsidies, then there would be speculation on the license. So I just want to ask a simple question. I'd like to ask the Transport Department and Education Department. Schools that have difficulties, what are they doing to find a solution? Thank you. Well, the Transport Department had responded. They say they're waiting for the parties to uh, negotiate. Well, Chairman, we have made some suggestions that when they dis design a bus route, uh, they need to uh, meet with parents. Parents want uh, the, the drop-off points to be close to their homes, but this uh, might affect the fees. So schools and parents need to negotiate. So when they design the bus route, they can satisfy parents and also maintain the fee structure at a reasonable level. Parents voice their views. Uh, the schools don't have a professional knowledge uh, on how to design the routes and minimize costs. So through the working group, schools and the industry can exchange ideas. Well, put simply, Chairman, uh, I'd like the government to take a more, a more active role because uh, sometimes there is mistrust uh, on uh, both sides. Uh, I think uh, a, a more active government intervention would be better. Well, just now you heard that uh, Education and Transport Department have the, the same stance that uh, they will participate actively and they hope uh, that uh, the parties can negotiate a solution. Mr. Alba Chan, well this is a problem that has been repeating itself. In the public hearing I already made my views clear. Uh, the government needs to be very cautious and the policy should be formulated as a whole 
of course we do have some problem uh, some schools with problems there in many ways many solutions to the problem uh, whether it's a, a bus or a franchise so you need to provide them with incentives so that uh, it is economically feasible well the license fee uh, costs some three million and there are some 7,000 vehicles so if the licensing regime affects operations that would lead to conflicts you are creating a lot of conflicts of course we have to take note of the school's needs so do you have a dedicated license a dedicated vehicle well if you look at history why uh, did school buses uh, enter other uh, arenas? It's because they couldn't uh, make a living. After they served the schools, if they only uh, made two or three runs for schools, it wasn't enough to make ends meet. So on Saturday, Sunday, they would take on tour groups or before uh, a school run, they might uh, serve factories, but now we have less and less factories. So the development, uh, there were uh, there was a historic uh, background. So if you have a dedicated license, it's going to be expensive. If uh, the cost is three million, uh, if we have a driver that only makes four runs, so if you can fill sixty people, that might be able to cover cost. But if your bus can only uh, accommodate 20 30 people then you need to redo the calculations unless uh, you have a two dollar fare subsidy for the elderly so unless the the transport department and education department say that uh, they they can they only need to pay two dollars and they can uh, they will foot the difference you need to handle also the uh, private schools where they charge higher fees they can afford transport uh, costs but for families on social welfare they f uh, it is a heavy burden so if you look at the history it's uh, not as simple as it seems. I've pointed out uh, the problem, but I have no conclusions. And I uh, don't think this um, uh, measure should be uh, implemented um, despite um, uh, the objection from the trade. Um, And I think um, uh, you really m uh, must not allow um, uh, um, such disputes to arise. Uh, Mr. Porche, so Mr. Albert Chen is of the view that uh, we shouldn't um, uh, adopt a drastic and um, hurried approach. In fact, we should um, um, uh, adopt um, a more prudent and uh, sec uh, a grad uh, gradual approach, but then uh, I don't think you should um, uh, res uh, resort to um, a scaremongering. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, um, scaring the uh, industry into uh, doing something. In fact, uh, many members did attend the meeting on the twenty seventh of March. In July 2004, uh, there was a public hearing, and uh, it was attended by 93 deputations. Uh, and uh, should we uh, just um, hastily uh, 
implement a new measure uh, after giving 14 days notice and um, I think the industry um, is enraged uh, because uh, this is a major policy change. It's um, a constructive idea to have workshops comprising the um, uh, schools and also the um, operators. In fact, um, there was um, a um, very frank discussion and exchange of ideas um, at the workshop. And uh, um, the the chairman uh, says um, rather ironically that uh, the government's policy is to um, 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 have the uh, sector and the um uh, as, uh, the different sectors continuing with their very active um um or proactive discussion i was not being uh, ironic i but um i think um uh, concerning uh policies which have not been well thought out uh, they are not um, 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 desirable. And also, Chairman, if uh, we make casual remarks, um, then now uh, um, th that that will not help um, things um, um, move forward. That will not um, help um, the industry. So um, some say that uh, the um, government is um, uh, trying to scare the um, industry into doing something. I just want to know whether the government has got all the data. Oh, and uh, is it that you're going to implement the uh, measure if um, discussions do not bear fruit? I want to know what your latest position is, Under Secretary. Chairman. Um, the government um, hopes to um, um, put in place um, measures um, that will um, satisfy the demands of students when the school year starts in September this year. We we are uh, putting forward the concept. We are not um, saying that we don't. Uh, we we want to uh, issue. Um, a very very large number of um, new licenses. We um, have seen this lack of balance in the market. We know that we have the responsibility to do something, and so we will um, consider the um, AO3 uh, R endorsement, um, uh, and we'll uh, look at how we can implement it in a very um, uh, uh, appropriate manner, and of course we need to take into account um, uh, um, important factors. Right, we've completed the first round, and now let's start the second round. Mr. Frankie Yick, how much time do I have, Chairman? Three minutes. Thank you. Concerning A O three um, endorsement, I've already explained my position. I want to say that um, uh, this doesn't apply to schools which um, have been encountering tendering uh, difficulties. And secondly, I believe uh, most um, uh, all members do understand where the problems lie, but it seems that the government doesn't understand what the problem is. It's a structural problem. It's not a supply and demand problem. It's not that um, parents are unwilling to to pay more. Um, the problem is that. Um, um we we have a mismatch between supply and demand i think the education bureau's response is disappointing yes i understand that there um um is a travelling expense subsidy for students in need but then the amount was fixed on the basis of um students um going to school in the same district but now we see uh, students travelling to um um, um, a, a far away district to school. No, uh, at a public hearing, there was an Islamic school telling us that in fact they had students from all over the territory. So it's not that parents are unwilling to pay more f um, school bus fees. Um, 
um, simply um, that the fees are unaffordable to some parents. A few hundred dollars is a large sum of money. So. Uh, I um, have said that um, um, the the uh, your bureau should through the education bureau um, uh, ask schools if they have difficulties and if difficulties they should um, uh, approach the association. Now uh, I wonder if the, our officials have um, uh, um, studied um, the bids received by schools. Uh, the covering. Uh, covering letter says uh, 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 eight rules are required, but that in one annex it mentions two rules, and in, that, uh, in another uh, annex seven rules, and there are only a total of 120 students. And uh, you may need as many as seven um, buses for eight rules, for example. So uh, have our officials um, read the bids received by the schools? Does anyone know? Whether the um, tendering specifications are reasonable, I think I will invite the Education Bureau um, to uh, say a few words. In fact, I have personally read um, the tendering documents, especially um, those um, without any response. Right. In fact, um, at the uh, tripartite or, or multi-party meeting, Mr. Frankie Yick did raise um, this point, and we have reminded schools to um, lay down specific requirements in the tendering documents, and uh, we encourage direct dialogues between schools and um, school bus operators, so that. Uh, there can be a better mutual uh, mutual understanding. In fact, um, um, I've read many um, bits. Many of them, uh, many of the tendering um, specifications are clear. But then, uh, very often, schools receive um, few bits, and some schools do not receive any returns at all. Uh, yes, we can uh, uh, have more communication with schools um, concerning the content of the tendering documents. What if the um, operators uh, find the tender specifications um, unclear? Uh, they can approach the schools for clarification. But can they approach you? Because Mr. Frankie Yick says that the tendering specifications are clear, but you said you you had um, um, studied the uh, uh, tendering documents and you think the terms are clear. Now. In fact, I have um, asked the association to um, provide a template for schools, so that the schools will provide operators with all the necessary information for putting in bids. At the um, meeting on that day, the Education Bureau said that its funding was for education purpose, and so it had nothing to do with um, traveling expenses. But then, as you know, in the uh, new secondary school curriculum, there is an element of OLE. Students have to um, um, do a lot of things. Um, um, and um, they have to stay behind um, at school after school hours, and then they have to go back to they have to go back home. So you can't say that traveling subsidies have nothing to do with education, Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Um, so um, a few bits um, are received by schools, and as a result, um, students do not have um, adequate school bus service. Parents have to pay um, high fees. But I want to uh, know the uh, causes of um, students having so few choices or uh, no choices at all. I think you have to um, uh, come up with a correct diagnosis before you can prescribe the right medicine to the patient. I think. Um, Licenses or endorsements um, should be issued uh, based on the market situation. But then the administration decided to step in. A cap was imposed, and as a result, um, there was speculation, or there has been speculation. So the um, the market is already um, uh, in um, an unhappy. 
in an unhealthy state, and if you、um, intervene further, then、uh, the situation may deteriorate. So why are you so confident that with、um, additional licenses issued, the problem can be resolved? And then second,、uh, for any vans, um, um, the、uh, operators can decide、um, what the、um, the、uh, routing. Um, should be. How come um, you um, do not give、um, school bus operators a, a free hand concerning、um, the routing? And then,、uh, as our students are scattered, so scattered,、um, uh, how, how can you、um, deal with this problem? Yes, perhaps I can、uh, invite the、uh, transport department to.、Um, Analyze the、uh, causes of the present、um, stalemate.、Uh, yes,、um, for non-franchised buses, Chairman, there are a number of、um, endorsements. And seventy percent of buses with such endorsements are providing student service. And、um, But then、um, there are problems reflected to us, like、um, no bids received and、uh, few choices for students and parents, and that's why we hope to、um, increase、um, an additional or, or provide an additional operational arrangement for providing a dedicated endorsement for a dedicated type of service. We hope that this will help improve the situation. And concerning the routing,、uh, we have、uh, um, certain requirements for private buses. But then for A O three buses, some of them have other endorsements as well. And so long as they can get contracts from the schools, they、um, can provide A O three service. So long as、um, they can、uh, satisfy the safety requirements. All right, Helena Wong and Kiki -Ki Kwok haven't spoken. They want to speak. And then we have Mr. Wong Kwok Heng Heng Tang Ka Piu. Second round. I will draw a line here because we have an other item on the agenda. Chairman. I have received parent and schools complaints. I would hope the the department can propose other solutions than just issuing licenses. Now, some high schools, some Islam schools, I have mentioned that before. They have to. Collect minorities across the territory, so they are dispersed. So therefore, you have zero tenders, and nobody is going to submit a tender, or they、uh, have to charge very high fees. So, if they don't, if schools don't accept these students, then they won't have sufficient enrollment. So, they are forced to, to subsidize. So they charge a few hundred dollars, six hundred, around six hundred. But then schools have to subs、uh, subsidize another few hundred. It takes more than a thousand、uh, in fees. So the school is losing a million per year. How can they do that? How is that sustainable? The education department is not going to refund them. So they would rather purchase their own bus and be issued the license to collect their own students. So. So, if the schools can raise the funds to purchase a bus, then they can collect their students. So, I hope you can facilitate that. And the current method、uh, doesn't allow you to control prices. So, you have very、uh, you have tenders that charge a very uh, high pr price.、Uh, in In Lai Chiko, for example, to send the children to Hong Kong Island, it's two、uh, thousand plus dollars. We're not talking about twelve, fifteen years free education. The tuition fee is waived, but the school bus fee is twenty-seven hundred, and it's out of control.、Uh, so 
they can charge whatever they want. Uh, uh, the parents can't uh, send their children to school. They have to go to work. So if you're saying we're not going to issue a school bus license, but school bus f fares are so high, what uh, solution can you propose? Ms. Wong referred to Islam schools. We are aware of this, uh, that where the if the school can operate uh, a private bus, a private school bus, we do have a license that can meet that requirement. What about the uh, price of school buses? Uh, just now I had explained from the transport perspective, we feel that non-franchise buses uh, these can be determined by the market. Uh, how can the supply meet demand if both sides can provide more information and if they can coordinate some f efforts? For example, can they carpool? Can different schools share a bus? These are actually good methods. Mr. Kokake. Well, referring to the government paper and colleagues' responses, I understand that the government is in a difficult position. There are objections from the industry. Uh, we also have a lot of parents. Uh, my children also need to use a school bus service, so I understand the difficulty. Uh, the bus fares are getting more and more expensive. And Ms. Helena Wong referred to 2700 uh, for middle class or grassroots level, it's very hard to afford. So, well, the government should assist schools in solving problems. Uh, if you were to issue new licenses, can you prevent them from providing other services? Uh, some vehicles might have a license, but they operate in other areas. So even if you allow schools, uh, such as Islam schools, you give them a license, they still have to serve very few students over a wide area. So, so shouldn't the education department provide assistance to these disadvantaged schools because they have problems with enrollment? They need to serve a wide geographic area. Uh, they cannot reject students. So what kind of policies do you have to help them? If current policies can help, then they still need to break even. And the third, the third question is about the consultation period. I would not object to extending the consultation period, but the most important principle is can it really help parents and schools solve a problem? I'm afraid that if you create a new license, it, it does not resolve the problem. Have you considered this? Well, Mr. Kwok, uh, these questions have been answered, so could you respond briefly? I'll respond to the last question first. The consultation period. Well, we need to have a goal. Uh, uh, we need to come up with a solution for this scholastic year. But the school opens in September. Now, if both parties can f hammer out a solution through the working group, well, Well, whether we can subsidize disadvantaged schools, uh, let's hear from the ED. Well, different schools, they uh, have enrollment for students whose uh, mother tongue is not Chinese. Well, would, will you have restrictions on uh, school bus subsidies? Well, they had already answered they will only uh, subsidize individual students. 
Next, Mr. Wong Gohing, second round. Thank you, Chairman. The industry, the in transport industry, and schools uh, working group. In the short term, uh, it just provides uh, superficial solution. But this working group, I emphasize, the ED cannot. Uh, stand on the sidelines. They have to participate actively. They said they provided subsidies and that's the end of their responsibility. Well, I think the ED cannot stand on the sidelines. That's the first point. The second point, the structural problem we're facing, the ED and Transport Department need a permanent solution. So after solving the problem at root, they can solve the peripheral problems. The third issue in the omnibus operators submission, the ED and Transport Department should assess these suggestions, even though it's a stopgap measure uh, for, uh, regarding uh, the uh, this year's scholastic year. But I think for a longer term solution, the Transport Department should consider these views in greater depth. Regarding the working group, whether the ED will participate. I can defer to ED. Uh, you also mentioned the omnibus operators, two suggestions. Well, of course, in the long term, we will make reference to these views. There are pros and cons to their suggestions. Uh, we can discuss uh, in greater depth uh, in a separate venue. Well, the ED has uh, participated in dialogue and facilitation of dialogue. We had accompanied uh, schools in attending this meeting in March. Well, I would want active participation from the ED because this is a structural uh, problem. It's a procurement issue. The ED should take a proactive measures. Uh, it cannot shirk its responsibilities. Mr. Tangabiu, of course, uh, this is a public transport uh, framework uh, topic. I think ultimately we welcome communication, the two departments plus schools and the transport industry second. We hope that uh, you can provide more resources and assistance. You, you shouldn't just cross your arms and stand on the sidelines. We should increase supply as uh, the omnibus operators propose. All the NFBs, uh, they should be able to adopt the Singapore model. Uh, they also have a nanny bus uh, uh, association. They want to increase in supply. They want more seats in the bus. Well, since you're dealing with the public mini bus seats next month, whether they can be increased from 16 to 20, they are private mini buses. Uh, it's the same uh, issue. They can uh, uh, increase their turnover. So the government should work on these three areas, more communication, more resources, and more supply. So you cannot rule that out. You have to assess this and respond to, to the suggestions proposed by the omnibus operators. Well, this is one means of increasing supply.
the nanny bus uh, 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 operators want to increase uh, seats in their buses so you cannot just spout vague slogans about increasing supply could you respond regarding communication that's what ha we have been doing in the last few months we have um, facilitated the establishing of the working group we are very happy to see uh, the transport industry raising uh, awareness about their difficulties uh, regarding the transport department suggestion uh, well but the industry is talking about uh, uh, doing it step by step not increasing uh, fleet numbers well we see that some 70 percent of uh, vehicles that can serve uh, students some 30 percent are not providing services to schools so if you even if you increase the number of licenses does would that uh, increase uh, the take up if we have dedicated license for dedicated routes this is something that we need to consult with in the industry well we have overrun uh, so we need to conclude this item we now move on to item number four Tate's Khan tunnel rate increase so we now invite the relevant officials Okay, we welcome the Tate's Corn representatives. So the government can take us through the paper, that then the tunnel operators also have some time. So we have set aside three minutes and seven minutes respectively for the government and the tunnel company chairman last year on the 23rd of September the Tate's Carn Tunnel Company had uh, submitted a fair increase proposal that uh, from 1st of August this year they want to uh, increase the fees for the tunnel now after receiving this fair increase application we had responded uh, uh, and we persuaded them to uh, tune uh, down their fair increase rate for example uh, especially they should uh, reduce the impact on public transport the tunnel company had considered our government proposal and agreed with the government proposed rate and also agreed to the category of vehicles uh, that should uh, have a fair reduction so um, there will not be any increase for public light -like buses and um, all types of goods vehicles. And then um, single-decker and double-decker buses, $1 increase, motor um, motorcycles and private light -like buses. Um, two dollars, then um, private cars, taxis, and every additional exo, three dollars. The uh, Weighted average rate of tow increase um, dropped from 15% to 11.9% because of the revised proposal. And also, um, the effective date uh, of the tow increase will be deferred to the 1st of December 2015. And um, the uh, tunnel company will not apply for further increase in tow during the remainder of the franchise period. 
um, the ordinance provides that the uh, tolls may be varied by agreement between the Siyin Council and the tunnel company, and if an agreement can't be reached, either party may resort to arbitration. Um, in fact, the ordinance has not set out the criteria for determining toll adjustments. It only stipulates that if the matter is submitted for arbitration, the arbiters um, need to be guided by the need to ensure that the company is reasonably but not excessively remunerated for carrying out its obligations or exercising its rights under the ordinance. So I'll invite um, the tunnel company um, to um, um, give um, a presentation. Mr. Wong, thank you. I thank the transport panel for giving us this opportunity um, to talk about our application for toll increase. So please um, look at the screen, members. Justifications for toll increase. The Tetskan Tunnel Company Limited uh, was awarded uh, a 30 year BOT franchise in 1988, and we're now in a uh, 26th year, 27th year, and um, the remainder of the franchise period is only about three years. And in fact, we um, have invested $2 billion uh, to build the tunnel. And uh, we were able to uh, make a profit starting from 07 08. And in the financial year 2013 2014, in fact, the um, accumulated uh, profit uh, was only uh, $1.2 um, uh, which um, uh, was much lower than the uh, f um, forecast figure of. Um, Five billion. Now the um, company can through um, uh, charging tolls uh, be re be reasonably but not excessively remuter remunerated. The uh, target IRR rate uh, is thirteen point oh two percent, but at the moment it's only six point one percent. In the 1980s, the government tried to uh, attract investment in major infrastructural projects, and so reasonable remuneration was one of the uh, attractions offered or incentive offered. Now, why is it that our um, revenue or financial income has been um, poorer than expected? You can see the uh, forecast uh, vehicle flow. And then you can also see the actual vehicle flow. The discrepancy was caused by factors which could not be seen during the bidding stage. Now, for the Lion Rock Tunnel, the toll has not been adjusted upwards for 16 years since 1999 and as a result there has been a widening um, difference between the uh, toll levels of the two tunnels. We have been trying to open up new sources of revenue. We've been um, cutting down on expenditure. Concerning generating additional revenue, we um, have applied for toll increases. We've also offered um, discounts on various occasions to try to allure more vehicles to use the Tetskan tunnel, but then the um, outcome has not been very satisfactory. So look at our other sources of revenue. They only account for 4% of our total income. And so even if there is an increase in um, non-toll uh, revenue, um, that won't be um, very conducive to increasing our overall income. In fact, in the past decade, we've been uh, continuously in enhancing our efficiency. Uh, we've also adopted cost um, saving measures, and these measures have been effective. The Tescan Tunnel is the longest tunnel for vehicles in Hong Kong. And I want to say that, in fact, uh, we have been operating in a very cost effective manner. When we 
proposed new tolls we took into account the cumulative um, inflation impact and also uh, the public's um, acceptance and affordability. So in the revised proposal, we have um, reduced the um, increases. There will not be any increase for public light buses and all types of goods vehicles. Uh, there will be a $3 increase for private cars, taxis, and then $2, a $2 increase for motorcycles and public light buses, and a $1 increase for single-decker and double-decker buses. And I want to say that our toll is the lowest among the tolls of um, all privately um, operated tunnels. And the proposed toll increase will have minimal effect on vehicle flow in the Line Rock Tunnel. In November last year, we uh, completed a new round of customer satisfaction survey. And thanks to the um, efforts and hard work of the staff, over 90% of the respondents were happy with our performance. And we'll continue to strive hard to provide a pleasant um, driving experience uh, for our um, users. Thank you. That's all concerning my presentation. I have to say that our meeting will have to be lengthened by um, 15 minutes. Uh, ten members have indicated that they would like to speak. And so uh, three minutes for each member, because we'll still need a few minutes to um, deal with um, other in-house matters. So we have Claudia Mo, um, Gary Fan, Tang Ka Piu, Chen Kam Lam, Chen Hang Pan, Albert Chen. So a total of ten members. All right, I'll draw a line here. Three minutes for each member, Ms. Claudia Mo. Thank you, Chairman. So I want to say that um, this is really regrettable. Um, so it's a BOT um, model, and um, um, you you have um, um, made um, four billion dollars uh, less in uh, terms of your profit. So it seems that you have been. Um, um, uh, uh, um, made to uh, invest, or you have been attracted into investing um, into this. But then for the Lion Rock Tunnel, the toll is only $8, and your tolls are really high. And then there is competition from Route 8. Look at WHC. If you compare the toll of the WHC and the toll of the um, uh, Cross Harbour Tunnel, you'll see that for a private car, uh, WHC charges $60, and then the uh, Cross Harbour Tunnel $20. And then trucks are using the Cross Harbour Tunnel 15 to $30, but w if they use the WHC, $125. So if uh, you don't need to ask those in the transport um, industry, which tunnel they will choose. I'm not um, trying to um, uh, speak in a satirical tone. I'm being serious. Um, will it be um, better if you can reduce your tolls so as to attract more drivers? If you ask me, I will definitely choose Lion Rock Tunnel. So you're saying that um, with the uh, toll increase, 700 vehicles will switch to um, uh, the Lion Rock Tunnel, 100 will use um, Taipo Road, and then 300 will use Route 8. Now, but then um, have you underestimated the number of um, drivers who will switch to um, Lion Rock Tunnel? Now, because um, I I'm worried that um, um, the Lion Rock Tunnel will become very congested. Um, because I, I'm worried that it's uh, like the situation um, in the WHC. You know, in the WHC, the traffic is really very, very smooth. But then the traffic is very congested in the um, Cross Harbour Tunnel. So I'm worried that um, if you increase your tolls, then there will be less users. And the Lion Rock Tunnel will become more congested. Yes, Mr. Wong, 30 seconds. I think uh, drivers choose um, the tunnel, wh which is um, most convenient. 
um, for them to reach the destination. Ms. Mo said that we should um, try to um, um, reduce the tolls, and we'll be able to make more profit with more users or drivers. I want to say that for the t proposed increases, we've taken into account the cumulative inflation impact and. If um, we are to reduce the, our tolls, then uh, we we must be uh, be able to attract a lot of a lot more vehicles before we can uh, really um, 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 make the profit, uh, Mr. Gary Fan. Now it is said that um, the IRR uh, will be increased from six point eight one to six point nine one, an extra zero point one percent for the remainder of the franchise period. Now the franchise period will expire expire rather after three years and. So I I don't think um, any uh, toll um, increase can really um, substantially increase your IRR out um, in the next three years. But then the zero one point zero point one percent increase in IRR will be a heavy burden for the transport industry and for drivers. And so I I oppose this uh, proposed increase. And then secondly, Chairman. It is said that as many as seven hundred vehicles will um, use the Lion Rock Tunnel instead. I think that's the um, tunnel company's assessment. So, do you agree, um, the government? Do, do you agree? Now, because you know, um, at the moment. There are ninety thousand vehicles using the Lion Rock Tunnel every day for the Taescan Tunnel. It's a, f a daily figure of fifty-seven thousand. So how can you make sure that um, um, there will be a, a more even distribution of traffic between the two tunnels? Because I'm worried that the uh, Lion Rock Tunnel, which is already congested, will become more congested with a toll increase in the ta uh, Taescan Tunnel. Under Secretary, yes. Um, the member asked um, um, whether the um, public's financial burden will be increased. Now there will not be any toll increases for public light buses and uh, goods vehicles. So you can see that we are already responding to um, the uh, demands of the public. And then for um, buses, the um, increase or the um, Burden of the passengers will not be increased um, too much, but then taxis and um, private cars um, an increase of three dollars from seventeen dollars to um, twenty dollars, and the uh, weighted average rate of toll increase will be eleven. Percent over eleven percent, and I, we, we are mainly concerned about um, public transport most and the impact on public transport. And then perhaps we can have an an assessment of um, the um, impact on the Lion Rock Tunnel. Our assessment is similar to the tunnel company. So, what measures uh, do you have uh, to divert traffic from the uh, Lion Rock Tunnel, Lion Rock Tunnel, and Tate's Carn? Uh, during peak hours are saturated and there are, is a long queue, so diversion measures are in non-peak hours. So you are just adding to the 90,000 uh, traffic volume. Well, the fare increase for Tate's Karn, uh, the reason is that uh, they haven't reached their investment return, and second is that they only have two or three years left in there uh, before the franchise expires. Well, given that, but they're now asking for an 11.9 percent increase. That is far higher than inflation. It's almost three times the rate of inflation. So you can see that this will lead to a chain of uh, a chain reaction. It will add to transport costs and ultimately the public burden uh, will get heavier. So I do not agree. I object to this 11.9% increase. And uh, this rate increase might not add to the profitability in the remaining years of the franchise. 
So I think uh, Tate's Car and Tunnel Company could consider other measures to increase uh, traffic flow. As chairman, I have received a submission from the taxi industry. They object to uh, rate increase for taxis. They have suggested that the Tate Car and Tunnel Company consider a empty cab return rebate. So could there be a empty cab rebate that would encourage more people to use Tate Car and Tunnel when they hail a cab? So could Tate Car and Tunnel Company respond to the taxi industry's request? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wong Kok Hing. Looking at the rate increase arrangement, our rate increase is 11.9%. That's slightly higher than the cumulative inflation. The cumulative inflation is 12.4%. So if there is an adjustment, uh, we don't want a complicated uh, approach. We will consider the legislator's suggestion. I hope you consider it seriously. The taxi industry uh, says that uh, you're adding a fare by $20 and uh, they have to pay as much for uh, on the return journey. So if they can have an empty cab discount that would encourage a uh, higher usage of the Tate Car Tunnel. Thank you, Chairman. Just now, uh, some colleagues mentioned the design throughput was uh, 70,000 for the Tate Car Tunnel, and uh, you're hoping that uh, the fare increase can help drive the uh, rate of return. But we're concerned that uh, it would drive down the uh, turnover volume. Uh, just now there was also concern about congestion in the Lion Rock Tunnel. So we hope that your assessment is accurate. If it's wrong, then Lion's Rock will have to bear with a larger pressure. Now, the document... Uh, refers to uh, the impact on public transport, on buses, minibuses. Uh, the impact on buses is minimal. Well, I'm concerned that uh, the bus companies will add, will increase their fares because of this measure. You see that you, we have figures of on their return and uh, cost expenditure. Could you provide more details? Your cost structure, uh, it, it's related to the traffic volume. Uh, so could you respond to my first question? Chairman, I'd like to say that uh, the Tate's Car and Tunnel fares make up only a small part of bus company's cost structure. It's less than 1%. So it should not have an impact on bus fares. And the Tate Karn Tunnel serves private cars and taxis more. So taxis and private cars make up 70%. Only 17% are buses. So uh, its impact on buses is minimal. Mr. Wong? Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to add that the tunnel company has operated for more than 26 years. Repair and maintenance costs have been going up, but through efficiency drives, we've been able to maintain costs. You can see from the graph that from 97-98, the company had uh, some environmental measures, including a uh, conversion of LPG to uh, electricity uh, 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 and also uh, an upgrade to the lighting system. 
the company was able to significantly reduce uh, utility rates from 14 million to some 6.8 million. So Tate Car Tunnel, starting from 95, this is their eighth increase, and on each occasion, they uh, uh, they they propose very aggressive rate hikes, uh, 15 percent and 11 percent on this occasion. We understand that uh, the franchise has only three years left, so it's obvious that uh, you want to maximize your return in the last three years. So I'd like to ask the tunnel company, you said uh, you've used a lot of uh, measures to reduce costs and enhance revenue stream. Uh, I think you have also increased advertising. You have also provided discounts to drivers. So I'd like to ask, what is your discount uh, scheme? Yeah, I, I don't seem to recall discounts for private cars and uh, passionate good vehicles, lights good vehicles. So could you continue discounts? For example, Mr. Wong Kuo-hing suggested uh, empty cab rebates. Uh, the West Western Harbor Crossing is providing these discounts. Uh, you can provide that through uh, the technological means. Uh, so could the government also elaborate on peak hour traffic congestion uh, at the, in the Lion Rock Tunnel if Tate's car increases fares? Could you tell us how long uh, the queues will be how much more time do we need to set aside for travel I'd like to clarify that our rate increase has considered the cumulative inflation and we've balanced uh, affordability and the company's uh, interests so the rate increase is less than 12 percent it's lower than uh, cumulative inflation for the same period it's a restrained, uh, it's a very restrained uh, increase and our, our discounts would also affect income. So we have made appropriate adjustments. Now, legislators mention whether there can be some promotion schemes to increase traffic volume, but considering everything, uh, there is no uh, obvious uh, there the imp there is no positive impact. Yes, I understand that uh, you are uh, facing uh, a lot of difficulties, but users of the tunnel some eighteen percent is a large increase. I find it uh, disagreeable that. Taxis, they are different from private cars. The passengers are average members of the public. So people who take cabs are salary earners. So if you add three dollars, it's a heavy impact. Another group are motorcycle uh, riders. They consume less gas and their licensing fees are lower. So the, that would your rate increase would have a large impact on these two groups. I'd like you to uh, withdraw your increase uh, to these two groups. Did you provide figures on the, the usage uh, by these two groups? And I'm also worried that after the fare increase, there would be less traffic and uh, there would be more congestion in Lion Rocks Tunnel. So, and the, I, I therefore need to ask the government. They still have some three years in the franchise. The government 
can adopt some measures to lessen the burden on pu the public. For example, we had subsidies in ferries. Has the government considered has the government considered subsidies to those impacted by the large 18 percent increase? You are aware that they only have two or three years in the franchise left. Now, congestion will also affect traffic volume in other air tunnels. So, just, so is the government prepared? Who would you like to answer first? Tate, car tunnel first. Thank you, Chairman. Motorcycles and private vehicles. We have a very restrained increase. We considered all categories of vehicles. So this increase, uh, how, how many motorcycle users do you have? Motorcycle users, a uh, thousand plus per day. What's the percentage? Two point something percent. This rate increase even though uh, you had some negotiations. Our last topic was about nanny, uh, school bus nannies. So private minibuses are, will have to pay more. Uh, so from next year, the school buses uh, that use the Tate Car Tunnel, they will have to pay more. But I want to ask a crucial question. Why do you believe that the Tate Car Tunnel Company will not have further increase during its remaining years in the franchise? Second, I want to ask, have you considered using other means uh, to come to a conclusion, uh, for example, mediation? Uh, the Eastern Harbor Crossing uh, was not successful in its rate increase application. So, if there's arbitration, uh, the people would uh, feel that uh, it is a, f a fair decision. Well, first question. The company has made a pledge, and you can confirm that with the tunnel company. The second question. Could we deny the application? Well, both parties can enter arbitration. If the tunnel company feels that the government decision, that is the executive council, kind of council in meeting, uh, if they don't agree with that decision, they can go seek arbitration. In the past, uh, the rate we had cases where uh, in the Eastern Harbor Crossing where the final arbitration rate was higher than the initial application. So, well, I'm saying that we need the public to see that the government is working hard uh, in the public's interest and we're not trying to divert traffic to Lion Rock Tunnel. Yes, Chairman, we do have some assessment on uh, traffic congestion. Shot in uh, traffic coming into the downtown area, they have many choices. I, my, my so, drivers um, may or may not choose the uh, Lion Rock Tunnel. And we don't think there will be a very um, big um, impact here. So, we've um, I've already had members' views. We we think uh, my my suggestion is that the matter be submitted to arbitration. Mr. Chen Kam Lam, Chairman, I think we need to give investors um, reasonable remuneration. But then, does it mean that? Um, we need to guarantee that you can achieve that 
reasonable remuneration, not necessarily, because if you um, do some business, you have to take some risk. Um, the franchise period will expire uh, in about three years' time. Is it that you really must go so far and propose such a big increase as to make as much profit as possible before the end of the franchise period? And the tunnel service is, in fact, a service to the public. The uh, average rate of toll increase uh, is about 11%. So you are trying to um, put all the uh, burden on the drivers, on the consumers. When the government decided that the Texcan tunnel should be built, um, the drivers did have some expectations. They expected that the uh, tunnel toll would be um, about the same as the uh, toll for the Lion Rock Tunnel. And even if the toll was to be higher, it shouldn't be too much higher than the toll of the Lion Rock Tunnel. Now, at the moment, we have Xing Moon Tunnel, um, Chuan Quan O Tunnel, Lion Rock Tunnel, and um, the toll levels are broadly comparable. But then for Texcom Tunnel, the... Um, Toll level is much higher than the um, tolls of the um, of the tunnels, and I think um, the BOT agreement has brought about such a situation. And uh, drivers and the public find this situation unacceptable. Now, if um, this increase goes ahead, then I think um, three years later. Um, uh, when the government takes over the tunnel, it must um, lower the um, toll levels substantially. I want to say that today I will not uh, give my support to the um, toll increase or the toll increase application. From 2013 to August this year, um, um, is the cumulative um, inflation 12%? I don't think so. Uh, and then concerning um, customer satisfaction, we were given uh, a slide uh, on that. If you ask drivers whether they um, are willing to accept this um, rate of increase, they would definitely say no. Now, Ms. Gary, Mr. Gary Fan has um, just tabled uh, a motion for the panel, but then um, I can't uh, deal with your motion because um, we've um, exceeded the um, scheduled end time of um, the meeting. All right, uh, Mr. Chen Hang Pan. I think um, that uh, the case can tunnel company uh, is, uh, adopts a, a quite an aggressive approach. So um, there were toll increases in 1995, 96, the year 2000, year 2005, and then 08, uh, and so on and so forth. But then do you know that if you um, increase your tolls, vehicles will use other tunnels? Um, the tunnel company uh, accused the government of not having adjusted the uh, toll of the Lion Rock Tunnel upwards. Now, now many drivers choose Lion Rock Tunnel because the toll is uh, low, and if you keep on increasing your tolls, then the toll difference will become greater and greater, and as a result, more drivers will go to Lion Rock Tunnel, and Lion Rock Tunnel will become more congested. Now, it seems that the um, tunnel company wants to uh, increase the uh, tolls as much as possible before the expiry of the franchise period, and I think this is really not a, um, a generous or a benevolent approach. Is it that upon the uh, expiry of the franchise, the tunnel will be handed back to the government? So will the government uh, bring down the um, tolls of this um, tunnel to the um, toll levels of um, other tunnels like the Lion Rock Tunnel or the Shen Moon Tunnel? Under Secretary, now when the franchise for the Texcan Tunnel expires, Chairman, then the ownership of the tunnel will revert to the government. And the... Um, um, Revenue generated will also um, um, 
go to the government. So it's the same as the、um, situation for the、uh, cross harbour tunnel.、Um, in fact, adjustments、um, to、uh, vehicular flow is also one factor that needs to be taken into account in、um, deciding、um, toll levels.、Uh, now, under secretary. Um, now, if you、um, promise us that、um, three years later the、uh, toll of、uh, the Tate Canal Tunnel will go down to the level of that of、um, Lion Rock Tunnel, then、uh, members of the public may be willing to、um, tolerate this、um, for three years. But is that going to be the case, Chairman? Uh, just to elaborate, when we consider the、uh, toll levels, we need to take into account a number of factors. Uh, we need to、uh, adopt the users pay principle, and we also have to consider the operating cost of the tunnel, and there are also other、um, transport-related considerations, namely the、um, uh, f tr vehicular flow in the, that tunnel. Mr. Albert Chan. I think for a private sector participation infrastructural projects, the Tate Canal Tunnel、um, can be said to be an unfortunate case. Um, um, the. Um, uh, were uh, variables uh, associated with the development in the districts concerned.、Um, there was、uh, a substantial drop in um, the um, 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 uh, transport of um, goods um, using the Tate Canal Tunnel and also Route Three. In fact,、uh, for、um, highways leading from Twin Moon to the mainland,、um, they they、um, are not as heavily used as expected. And I think uh, uh, the tunnel takes Kan Tunnel Company should count itself lucky because、um, it is or it has not been incurring、um, uh, a loss for some years. And for the bridge、uh, linking Shamshui Po、uh, to Chengyi and、um, other infrastructural projects, they've brought about a drop in the、um, use or the usage of Tate Canal Tunnel. So I really doubt whether you can、um, make a bigger profit through the proposed toll increases. You know the the、uh, the world today is very different、uh, from、um, the world thirty、uh, years ago when you put in a bid for、um, constructing the tunnel. If you、uh, increase the tolls, you're only going to、um, cost more vehicles to use the Lion Rock Tunnel. Yes, I understand that this、um, level of profit may be permitted under the franchise, but then will you suffer from a drop in revenue as a result of the、uh, proposed toll increase?、Uh, many members think this is going to be the case, and also、um, the proposed toll increase will aggravate traffic congestion in the Lion Rock Tunnel. So, because of the above reasons, I oppose this.、Um, Increase. In fact, over a decade ago, I、uh, proposed that、um, a, a tunnel and bridge authority be set up to buy back all the、uh, um, privately operated bridges and tunnels. All right. I think we need to、um, uh, adjourn the discussion of this item. We've got a few minutes left. Now, um, uh, we uh, the transfer panel went on a、um, study visit to Singapore. And we、um, have 
um, got the uh, report of the delegation, uh, paper CB4799 bracket 01. Members, please note the content of um, the delegation's report. And uh, under um, Section 29AF of the House Rules, the uh, report will be submitted to the House Committee. And on the uh, 5th of May, uh, Tuesday, um, at 9.30, uh, we're going to hold a public hearing on the public transport uh, strategy study. Uh, we're going to um, um, meet deputations on um, public or on public light buses. All right, so um, um, the next regular meeting will be held on the 12th of May at 9.30 a.m. And um, there will be uh, four items on the agenda on that day. Thank you.